Um, so our 1231 assets are last here. Um, they are used in a trade or business held longer than a year. They might be depreciable, they might not be depreciable. If they're not depreciable, they're land because that's pretty much the only asset that is not depreciable. All right, so we had all those factors under capital gains that would then determine what the tax treatment was. Here we have some factors as well, but not quite as many. We had like seven for capital gains, now we've got three. So the tax treatment depends on these three factors. Number one, whether the asset was sold at a gain or a loss. Okay, so was it a gain or was it a loss? You have to determine that. If it's a gain, was it depreciated? If it was, we're gonna treat it one way. If it wasn't, we're gonna treat it another way. Okay. And number three, whether the asset was depreciable real property, remember we had that 1250 and 1245 separated out because 1245 property was personal property, 1250 property was real property. So we have to determine if it was depreciable was it real property, like a building, or depreciable personal property, like equipment? So those are the three factors that we need to, to look at. So one, gain or loss. Two, depreciated. Three, property or personal. Those are the questions that we have to ask. So we have to net any gains and losses for 1231 property as well. Um, if a net gain results so if it's a gain, the gain is taxed as a long-term capital gain, but is subject to some, re some depreciation recapture provisions. All right, we talked a little bit about depreciation recapture when we talked about assets in the last chapter, um, where I said that you know if you had 179, if you've taken 179 or 100% bonus depreciation on an asset, and you end up selling the asset or disposing of it before it's fully depreciated, you've got to recapture that excess depreciation, that extra excess 179 that you took. Now, this is the same sort of concept, okay? So if a gain results, the net gain is taxed at a long term, at the long-term capital gains tax rates, subject to depreciation recapture provisions. We'll go into more detail about those. So those gains are going to get that special tax rate, right? The zero percent, or the fifteen percent, or the twenty percent. Um, if there's a net loss, it is treated as an ordinary loss. You get the best of both worlds. Any gains are taxed at a lower tax rate. Any losses get to offset. You, you don't have a limit on the amount of losses. You don't have that $3,000 limit. You can have a $30,000 loss. You can have a $50,000 loss. It's gonna, it's gonna offset all the other, all that other income and there's no limit to it on your tax return, okay? So gain equals capital gain rates loss equals ordinary <coughs> rates or ordinary uh yeah i'll just leave it at ordinary okay now the if you depreciated it though we've got to do some special stuff with the amount of depreciation you took because here's the thing when you depreciated it think about this you got your schedule c and you're depreciating your property 
You get to take that depreciation to offset ordinary income, right? On your Schedule C. You're now reducing ordinary income, tax, uh, income that is taxed at ordinary tax rates. So when you took that depreciation, you got to offset higher tax rates. It wouldn't be very fair if you have a gain now that that portion that you depreciated is taxed at a lower tax rate. Right, and then you get this gap between the benefit. Now the benefit is greater than the tax that you have to pay. So to address that, we've got to recapture the depreciation portion of a gain. So what does that look like? Let's, oh. There's some examples in your, in your book that we can do it here. Um, just to kind of the general concept of uh, the depreciation. So let's say we bought a building and let's see in 2017 and we paid $200,000 for it. All right. We uh, took depreciation on that building of 50,000. Probably wouldn't be that much, but you know. So our adjusted basis is now 150,000. Then in 2021, we sell that building for 300,000. In order to determine our gain or loss, we're going to subtract the adjusted basis of 150. So now we have a gain of 150,000. Gains are taxed. Gains for 1231 assets are taxed at capital gains tax rates. If we were able to take all of this gain and apply the capital gains tax rates, let's just say we had, what? let's say we were in the 20%. So we would pay, what, 30,000 30, tax. Okay. Now, remember, that $50,000 offset our ordinary income. So over the course of the years, let's say we're in the 35% tax bracket, ordinary. That 50,000 times 35%, this offset, what am I doing here? 35. 17, what do I get? 17.5? Did I get that right? You're my math, my math magician back there. Is it 17.5? Yes. We got $17,500 of tax savings from that depreciation because it was saved, it, we saved that money at the ordinary tax rate. But now, when we sell it, we're only having to pay 20% tax on it. It's not really very fair. Um, and how we address that is through this depreciation recapture. So what we do is we pull out the amount of the gain that is attributable to depreciation. Part of this gain is attributable to depreciation. Part of it is attributable to appreciation. It went up in value from 200,000 to 300,000. Right? So we're not going to we're not going to tax all of it at 20%. We're going to pull out the 50,000 which was attributable 
to depreciation, allowed or allowable, they say. We've got, we're left with 100,000, which is the amount that the building went up in value. This is the appreciated portion. These two gain, these two portions of the gain are taxed at different rates. The appreciated portion is a capital gain. So that hundred thousand, we're going to tax at the twenty percent. Remember, before we were going to pay thirty thousand dollars in tax if it was all taxed at the at the capital gains rate. The fifty thousand. We're going to tax at a different tax rate. So we have to separate out the portion that was due to the gain that was attributable to depreciation from the gain that was attributable to appreciation. This is the recapture. Um, and that's what they explain here. If it, and the tax rate that it that is applied depends upon whether it's real property or personal property. So if it's real property, which it is, this is a building, it's taxed at 25%. So real property is 1250 property. Personal property is 1245. Property gains due to depreciation from depreciation are taxed at 25%. Gains due to depreciation for 1245 property are taxed at whatever the ordinary tax rate is. So in our case, 35%. But this is a building, so this amount is gonna be taxed at 25%. So here, 20,000 and 12,500. 32,500. We're paying more in tax because of that depreciation recapture. If this was a piece of equipment and we're in the 35% tax bracket, $17,500 in tax. So now $37,500 is what we pay in tax. not a simple concept. When you think about it, when you really sit down and think about it and analyze it, it makes sense because what we're doing is essentially because this we got the benefit we are we got the benefit of the higher tax rate when we got the deduction. That means that we're going to have the detriment of the higher tax rate when we have the gain when we sell, when it's now income. It equalizes it. Now it doesn't exactly equalize it in the in the um, in the sense that you know the 25% tax rate, if it's real property and it's a 25% tax rate, we're still getting a benefit because our ordinary tax rate is 35%. Right? And of course, when we took that depreciation, we may have been in the 35% tax bracket, and now we're in the 24% tax bracket, that's entirely possible as well. So our tax bracket may have changed. But what this tries to address is, is equalizing that. Does that make sense? Don't just nod politely. But even if this one was real property, it was a building, right? This one was a 
building. So this should be 25% here. This was, in this example, I just did the example as if it were, if it were a piece of equipment instead. Oh. Yeah. So then it would be, for a building, it would be 25%. property because think about it does equipment go up in value no it goes down in value as you use it what about vehicles the vehicles would be included in this vehicles go down in value they go down in value as soon as you drive it off the lot right personal property tends to go down in value so chances are there's not going to be any appreciation chances are any gain that you have is all going to be due to depreciation that was taken, which means all of it's gonna be subject to the ordinary tax rates. For 1250 property, however, we do oftentimes see appreciation, right? For buildings and land, well, land is not included in this because it's not depreciable. For buildings, it's going to go, they're usually going to go up in value. They're going to appreciate. Sometimes they don't. Um, but oftentimes they do. So with buildings, that's when you're more likely going to see the, uh, some capital gains. So as I mentioned, some of it's capital gains. So what if we, we sold this building, we've got a claim. How do we enter this on the form? All right. First thing we're going to do, we're going to put it on this page two, part three of 4797. It says right here, gain from disposition of property under sections 1245, 1250. Don't worry about these, we're gonna talk about those. So, we've got a building. We acquired it uh, 1 1 2017. We sold it 12 31 21. This is our property A. Sales price. So, our sales price was 300000 Cost or basis is 200 Appreciation that we took was fifty thousand. Because it would no, ordinarily be a positive. In there. Adjusted basis. Uh, subtract line twenty-two from line twenty-one. Total gain. Subtract line twenty-three from line twenty. One fifty is our total gain, which is what we have up there on the board. Section twelve forty-five property. No, this is a building. It's section twelve fifty property. Going to use, we're going to fill out line 26 here. If straight line depreciation was used, enter zero on line 26G.
percent at okay. So in the olden days, they would the twelve fifty recapture was at the ordinary tax rates. This was so back between nineteen eighty one and nineteen eighty seven. Buildings were depreciated, were not depreciated over the straight line method. They used the accelerated methods. Well, since 1987, we use straight line depreciation. And the old uh, rules regarding 1250 was any amount of depreciation taken that was over and above what would be straight line would then be taxed at ordinary tax rates. That's not the case anymore because pretty much everything is, is straight line. So there's no over and above the straight line. However, now the gain, the, um, the, the rate is at 25%. So the unrecaptured amount of capital gain attributable to depreciation previously taken is taxed at 25% capital gain rate rather than the, the 0, 15, or 20%. So that's why you see it on that chart for the capital gains rates it's considered to be like a capital gain, but it's still at that 25% rate. Okay, here's an example. This is exactly the same as what we did, except their selling price was 275. So they've divided out the 1250 provision. This much is gonna be taxed at 25%. This much is gonna be taxed at the capital gains There's only a special tax rate for 
And this is kind of a mission.